Welcome to the first oral history of the Bronx Aerosol Arts Documentary Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Uh, Kurt and Pastor, uh, why don't you introduce yourselves briefly before we introduce the main event, our guest here. Okay, I'm, I'm Kurt Boone, I'm a native New Yorker, and I've been writing about uh, urban culture for 40 years. I'm Pastor Crespo, and I'm a volunteer here at the Bronx County Historical Society. All right, thank you. And we're really excited to be here today with the art legend, Butch Tu, who came of age in the Bronx during the 1970s and first achieved fame as a writer for his mastery of wild style lettering design and as a member of the Fantastic Partners. And there's many other things I could say about uh, uh, Butch Tu's stylistic and technical innovations, um, but we'll ask him to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, for now, we'll start this oral history with a bit of background. Uh, so. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family's history and background and how they ended up in the Bronx? Um, me, born and raised in the Bronx, uh, 1960. Uh, my father's from Georgia, sure. Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, my, Georgia. Yeah, Augusta, Georgia. My mother's from uh, the Bronx. Uh, their union is pretty much a mystery to me, but they did meet and uh, my mother had four kids. I got, um, I'm like the guy right in the middle. Okay, right in the middle. Yeah. I got an older brother, a younger brother. I got an older sister. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, we uh, grew up uh, around Claremont Parkway with the 3rd Avenue L. And that was still standing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, and, and because as a matter of fact, I think our, our window was right level with the L because you could hear it going by. Okay, sure. But uh, I don't think the trains really interested me then. Okay. You know, yeah. people were tagging and stuff like that. Uh, but I think it was more that point in time. People, I think, got more fun out of hitchhiking on the bus, <laughs> hitchhiking on the train. It wasn't really graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think uh, graffiti might have caught me when after we left uh, Third Avenue, we moved to Washington Avenue before Claremont Projects came up. Okay, okay, sure. And uh, from there, we went, we moved to Hunts Point. And that's that's where it all basically started. The Sixth Line. I uh, see. I lived at, at, by Whitlock, between Whitlock and, and Hunts Point. So when you're on the corner, we playing, and we playing giant, whatever, the pump in the, you would see the trains come out the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. And I think one day I saw a Take 5. Okay. And I think that changed my whole... <laughs> Everything you know with the with the fire hydrant yeah. with the flames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's when graffiti first grabbed me. How, how old were you? Do you think? I, I think I might have been eleven or twelve. Eleven or twelve. Yeah, okay. yeah. And had art interest you much before that point mm -hmm. in time? Yeah. In junior high school, you know, it's funny. There's a, a photograph. Uh, we were in art class, and everybody's sitting around. We might have had a, a, a art. A, what do you call it, like a project. Yeah. And everybody was, you know, drawing and doing whatever they're going to do. They want us to draw a bowl of fruit. They want us to draw a salt and pepper shaker. My project was on the blackboard. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And I had to tape paper all the way down. But that's how I started working big from the beginning. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a picture of that in my high school yearbook. Somebody had that photo. Oh, uh, but yeah, that's when it kind of started. I just love art. Yeah, which, yeah. which high school was it? You know, I went to junior high school. It was uh, 123. It's on Buckner Boulevard and, and Morrison. Okay, okay. That's Morrison. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. That, I was about uh, 11 years old. Uh, writing on the buses was big then. Okay, yeah. You know, because on the way home, everybody pull out their little... The markers were like this big. Yeah. And um, I was telling you before, everybody had a, a graffiti name. Everybody. Yeah. You know... Just like when uh, rap first started, everybody had a rap name. You you could have been cool, cool Stevie D, you know Steve Ski, MC Stevie Steve. That that was the format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was um, you know, either the street you live on. Yeah. I think I was Butch One Seventy Nine or something, and okay. then I was like, nah, uh, I'm gonna do Butch One. And there was this one guy in my junior high school named Keith. Yeah. Keith from Bronx River, and God bless the dead, he passed away a long time ago. But uh, he came up and said, I'm Butch One. 
You know, you know what I said? I'm Bush too. Yeah, easy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it went from there. It so went why, from why, 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 what's, what's like, is Bush your nickname? Or you just yeah, that's my nickname. Oh, my okay. brothers and sisters gave me that. There used to be a, just to bring that up real quick, there was a, a, a cartoon, Bozo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who was his sidekick? Butch. Butch, oh, okay. And they used to call me that, and I didn't like it at first, yeah. but it kind of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of stuck. But, yeah, that's where that came from, and um, it went from there. Some guys, uh, after the graph, that's when the hip-hop started with, the, you know, MC and DJ and people kind of migrated to that. I see, yeah, yeah. A lot of guys, you know, through the magic mark away, picked up a microphone. <laughs> you know, but I just kind of stuck with graph. Maybe because I never could really get the concept of of, of a rapping. Yeah. You know, I, you know, and then that freestyle, I, I was never that the best at it. So yeah. I stuck with the graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you were telling me the other day about, uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, the movie Before the Patch, and you wasn't really into it, but you... You grew up in that in that neighborhood. Yeah, down the street. Down the fourth, was it the forty first mm -hmm, precinct? Mm -hmm. And so, explain what it was like. You know, the, you know, obviously there were a lot of gangs. You 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 didn't get into any gangs or your, your brother. I might. I think I might have. I might have been a young javelin or something. Oh, young javelin. Okay. I might have been a young yeah, javelin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the royal javelins was the. Uh, the main guys. The it was, a, yeah. Guess. It was the, the nomads, the skulls, the immortals, the javelins. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of gangs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Best bet: don't even go up towards Simpson Street. Mm. Yeah. You know, don't go to Simpson Street because shit just happens up there. But then it wasn't really guns back then. It was more uh, zip guns. Zip guns. Yeah. yeah. You you make your own little zip gun. Yeah. And if you yeah, if you had that, you was a bad man. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, I, I just don't understand it. Bro. Yeah. People running around. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they catching people 17 and 18 years old with guns and, I know. and, and different stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. wow. I know. Yeah, but that's how the graph started with me. Because uh, there's a story I heard about uh, a, a rapper. I, I won't even mention his name, but it's a rapper. And they... Matter of fact, the group went to the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay. But he gave his story and said he wasn't good at writing. Uh, he couldn't really do the wild style and all that. Yeah. Which is why he left and went and started rapping. Ah, I see, I see. I see, see, and so see with me, forth, yeah. Huh? Yeah, so that's it. Everybody was looking for their niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I um, I'm creative, so I, I stay with the graph. Yeah. Absolutely. Now you you were in the competition and you you, you submitted your art to music and art high school and you got admitted, right? Oh yeah, I told myself uh I'm not going to a local high school. Yeah. Uh we had you have Monroe, Stevenson, Roosevelt. That's like being on the block. You yeah. ever go come outside and sit on a stoop? That's what it's like. Everybody, you know everybody. You know everybody here. Yeah. Sure. So I told, I, I made a, a, a promise to myself that I would, I would, I would never go to a local high school. Yeah. But I wanted to go to Clinton for the football team. Uh, okay. Because okay. back then yeah. Clinton had the, the the main football guys. Yeah. Clinton, Truman, uh, Evander. Yeah. Those were the football schools. Um. But I put together. They they told me. Um. I took the test for music and art, and they said, uh, well, you submit your portfolio. And I I know what a portfolio was. Yeah. A portfolio. But I had a, a small envelope, a, a manila envelope, and I put a few sketches in there. Okay. And I got accepted. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, before before we get more into, uh, into your high school experience, uh, since you mentioned football already, you were telling me earlier... Y'all used to play uh, football out on the street, and football was something that you were really, really into for a period of time. Is that yeah, right? Yes, that yes, that's true. Uh, I was in love with football. Um, I think my team back then it was twelve. It was, it was uh, at about seventy two, because Sunoco, the gas station, yeah. they used to give out stamps of different players, ah. and then you put that in your in a book. It's like a big. 
every day I would go, I would come across uh, Brucknell to go down to my boy's house on Evergreen okay, yeah. to get stamps. To go home and put them in my book. Yeah. And I, I had that book until um, not long ago. But yeah. Uh, never heard of Pop Warner. Yeah. You know, I, I had bought my own helmet, my own shoulder pads. I was a little guy. I think I might have weighed 120 or something. Oh, so, okay. wow. yeah. you know, I was uh, intent on bulking up and, and stuff like that. Um, I Maybe I didn't ask enough questions, but... I never made it to any football league. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. used to play football, like I said, right outside. Yeah. I put on my helmet, shoulder pad. You know, I think my favorite team was the Vikings back then because you had uh, the Purple People Eaters. <laughs> I used to like them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where, did, did you ever get injured while, while playing football out on the street? Oh, uh, no. But I think I had some... Uh, animosity from my brothers uh. and we used to play they would play and and I, I realized later on that I should have been more of a defensive guy okay because yeah. you can hit people legally yeah <laughs> legally especially when you learn where to hit them at yeah. Yeah. but uh I was one always wanting the ball which yeah. is it still could be defensive because if I'm the defense and you got the ball I'm coming after you yeah. But, uh, yeah, my brothers, they used to try to, uh, you know, late hits and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So you had, you had um, equipment on, on the street or you went to the park? You went to one of the... Right outside. That's interesting. Right outside. Yeah, that's right. So they attack you on the street? Yeah. <laughs> we play tackle right in the street. <laughs> right in the street. Right in the street. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, what other things would y'all do for fun in the neighborhood? Uh, I mean, back then, I, I had the helmet and the shoulder pads. I had the catcher's mitt with the catcher's glove. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. We had, you know, the, the stickball bats and uh, basketball. Yeah. A lot of sports. A lot of sports. A lot of sports, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but that's what we did. I mean, we did the, your normal Johnny on the Pony stuff and Ring Alivio, yeah. okay, you yeah, know. Yeah. We, we did all that. Pretty decent uh, upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as far as uh, as far as growing up goes, what kinds of music do you remember listening to, either in your house or on the street? Oh, um, before hip hop. Yeah. This is before hip hop. Yeah. Because I remember in 1979, we were already living on 179th Street, and we first heard rappers delight and all that. Okay. Yeah, but before yeah. that, we used to do the the stylistics and. You know, all yeah. those guys, we used to try, we used to, it was a couple of, uh, we used to have kissing contests. You get to, you get the girl as your partner, and you're going, I mean, you kiss it until slob is running all around. Yeah. But that was the reason, that was almost like spin the bottle. Yeah. Like spin the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Like the basement. Yeah. Yeah. The hooking um, party. Did you do yeah. the No, nah, okay, okay. we, school was where it was at. Yeah, yeah, I might yeah. go to school and not go to class. Yeah. But we never... Didn't go to school. Okay. School's yeah. where everything's at. Yeah. Absolutely. All the people. Oh, we wasn't even into the, the weed or the, the drink or nothing like that until I got to high school. And there okay. was one guy, uh, David Moss. Mm. He used to write, kill one. Kill one. And uh, he was like a friend of mine, but he used to always come up and I got the Acapulco gold. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then hand it to me. I take all the puffs and then I'm just sitting there like just for like the next two hours. You know, funny That's thing though. Stuff, yeah. yeah, funny thing is, uh, he was a writer too. He did the layups and, and everything. Uh, but uh, it was a, a thing that happened to him. He had that's the job. He had. Uh, let me turn this off. He had uh, stuck his head out the window of the of a moving train. Got hit by the traffic light. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Turn around, boom! Oh, so he has a, a nasty scar. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's what happened at the uh, music and all. But then later on, I really realized 
I, I try to call music and art like the cousins to art and design. Okay, yeah. But it's not, really not. We took we had art classes and we had uh, projects to do, but music and art was really for performing arts. Okay, I see. Acting. Yeah. So not really what not really what you were looking to get into. No, not true because a few actors came from that school. Okay, okay. A few actors, um, Marlon Wayans, uh, you, uh, Jimmy Castor. I don't know if y'all heard of Jimmy Castor. Yeah. Uh, he went to Music and Art. I think did Wesley Snipes somebody go to Music and Art? But okay, well, they yeah, they yeah, they yeah. spend out a few guys. Sure, but sure, then, sure. It wasn't like. Um, Fame, the TV show. That, that's what it was that based was, on. Uh, was the uh, performing uh, arts. Performing okay. out from the musical, uh, okay. the musical fame. high school. Fame. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the TV show was based on it. Yeah, but uh, not like I was not really dedicated, but then a lot of new shit started coming up. Okay, you know? yeah. Crews, graph. I don't know why these guys used to come to my school all the time. Shouldn't y'all be in school? <laughs> Yo, Bush. I come outside, there's like three, four guys waiting on me. What are y'all doing? I got to go to class. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that kind of de derailed me. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Now they coming up and uh, you got, uh, it was one girl, Karen. Uh, she used to, uh, we used to hang out at her house because she lived like over on Am Broadway, Amsterdam. But she kept uh, weed. Okay, yeah. But I, I was not really into weed like that. Never was. Yeah. Never was. I mean, I had a crew called Chiba Action because we. After a while, we did start that everyday shit. But. Sure, sure. Yeah, but that's uh, all. So when, music and art. Where was that at? That was uh, The, the was original that. music and art is, is uh, now it's called A. Philip Randolph. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's on uh, 135th and St. Nicholas Terrace. Okay. Oh. You come down uh, 135th and you get to the park. It's at the top. You can see it's like a castle. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a Philip Randolph now. But the uh, music and art moved down to Lincoln Center. Ah, uh, okay, okay. It's yeah, Lincoln yeah. Lincoln Center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what what was what was your overall experience like in high school? It was uh I don't know. I think like I said I, I Different things started coming into play. A lot of different stuff. So I would go to school and not go to class. Yeah. Stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, my my academic history. I was in one one two one three one four one five one six one seven S P E. Okay. And then when I went to eighth grade, I went to eight three. I thought the world was ending. Yeah. Eight three. Oh my God. And then uh, I, I got to music and art, and everybody's smart. Everybody's getting top grade, so I'm yeah. not really the star of the show no more. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and I wasn't really, like what I learned about college, it's like you can't come home and just throw your books and go on outside. You have to sit down and do what you got to do. Yeah. You got homework and shit. Yeah. Um, uh, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you were used to, in, in elementary and junior high, it just came naturally to you. Yeah, and it you, did. Yeah, didn't really have to. Didn't really have to study much or anything. Huh? When you got when, but when you get up to uh, the higher grades, it's it's, it's, it's a little more complicated because now you got the algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and you gotta you gotta figure that out. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not that simple. Yeah. And what were the teachers like for you in elementary and junior and, and high school? I, I loved all my teachers. They were good. It was one Miss Glazer, and I went back. I had to go, I, I couldn't find her, but she's the one that kind of uh, stunned my application. Oh, you, you're going for music and art, uh, like you're not going to make it. <laughs> and when I got to, when I made it, I, I purposely was going back to show her. Yeah, yeah. Miss Glazer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if, she, if she's still around. <laughs> no, I, th I think she's still around. Sure she's she's, not. she's not around. <laughs> That was, I think I went to music and I was 74. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. Um, and now, uh, my name is starting to become more known and people know me and this and that. I got a girlfriend and I got a thousand reasons not to go to class. Yeah. And then when sure. I finally do go, I'm not prepared yeah. and stuff like that. So that, yeah. that thing's got tumultuous around the 10th grade. Yeah. You, and you was already painting trains at that time, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had, um, I had, I think I had whole cars at that time. I, wow. I was going with a girl, 
uh, that lived across the street from 123. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And I used to go to her house. I, just, I still talk to her on Facebook. Um, can't get her to come over, but... Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I did my first piece on that bridge. My, wow. Right there um, across from 1569 Brooklyn Boulevard. It's, it's her building, and uh, uh, 123 is right across the street. Wow. And there's a little bridge that takes you to the other side of Bruckner. Yeah. I did a piece on that bridge, and I had that picture. I, I lost it. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. What, so, so were you in junior high school when you did that first piece? Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. So, so when you saw when you had that experience and uh, you know looking at the at the sixth line, you must have started writing pretty much very shortly after that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was easy to. I mean, if you're like a daredevil, it's easy because we would have to go up and, and go on the tracks and and. Step up on the third rail. Yeah. Uh, it's been some fatalities through the years. There's a few people died. Sure. Messing with trains. But uh, we would go, and, and then now it, we're forming a little crew. Yeah. You know, so now you got guys to go with you, and it might be four, five, six of us right up on um, Soundview. Yeah. Right, the trains is right there. Yeah. And uh, when the temperature dropped, they would put them in a tunnel, uh, and we would really go for it. That make it easy for you. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd have to balance and. Yeah, but we we there. knew how to we knew how to get through the track to the L pole and go <laughs> down the pole. You know, we had escape techniques and stuff. Wow. Um. Yeah, that's when uh they they tried to say that the six line. The six train yeah. was like a toy line. Oh, they all hit the six because we buy at this point we're the six boys. Yeah, the six boys, and you got guys. Oh, y'all the six boys. Come on, man. Them six. The six is a toy line. Y'all got oh, you king of the six. Come on, man. So what we did, we banded together and we moved over to the five train. <laughs> we going. We we are, we are now coming to Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's when we went hard. We went hard. Wow. Uh, we did a piece, uh, and Bob will tell you, uh, Invading the Five. We're Invading the Five. And, <laughs> and we just went off, and uh, that's when we, I guess, you, you're big time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Graduating yeah. from the yeah. to the five. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The twos and fives. Yeah. And uh, the five train wasn't that far, so we... You know, we never had problems because within the graph world, you have conflicts with different people and territorial and this. We never had that. Never, okay. I never had problems with that. I never got arrested for graffiti. Uh, so then the squad, you told me, they never got you. Never. Yeah. They used to come down to 149th Street and, and just say hi. They wanted to see. They wanted to see who was who. Yeah. Oh, I see the faces. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. But see, it's different now because if you if you destroy state property or something, they'll look for your name on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> they will. I heard yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> they look for you. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, so let me see. I think maybe just one or two more questions, and then we'll get you know fully into uh, into the graph world. Um, uh, but just a couple other questions about growing up. Uh, what are some things that you remember eating in your household while growing up? Uh, well, my mom does cook. My mom's a good cook. Yeah. Uh, Sundays, I think, my, we by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we are eating dinner. Okay. okay. But that's, yeah. see, I, I, I got accustomed to that. Yeah, yeah. See, I can get up at 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning and start dinner. Yeah. You know, uh, but then she would send you out for the Sunday paper. But that's when the Daily News is like a dollar. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think sure. now it's maybe $3. Yeah, I think so. But uh, my mom she did your baking and she fried chicken and your meatloaf, everything. Yeah. Your spaghetti, all of that. Yeah. Only thing I didn't like was cream corn. Oh, okay. I, okay. Think, I think I got the hives. I had, uh, all of a sudden I was like, yo. And then I looked and it was like a big whelp. And I was like... <laughs> And I never ate it again. <laughs> and I, I had to be like eight. Okay. Yeah. Eight or nine. Never yeah. ate it again. I'm 61. <laughs> never. Uh, did your dad ever cook? No, I think uh, they had 
split. My okay. father was living on Webster Avenue. Oh, okay, okay. In in a basement apartment. But my grandmother, his mom, lived around the corner on Clay. Ah, okay, okay. You know, uh, but yeah, I guess they he did his thing over. There. I used to go see them. I'm I'm that type. I always go visit my aunts and uncles. Yeah. And, and this and that. I, that was my my thing. Uh, you know, um, yeah, but as far as cooking, because I, I, I cook now. Okay. And yeah. I, I know my way around the kitchen because you know how mom would be like, get me an onion. <laughs> you know, you know, get, not that big. So now in your mind, you know you got it, yeah. what to do. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, but you know, my mom's cooks. I, I, I cook. I think my daughter's a good cook too. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um. Would, would you all ever visit your, your father's family back in Georgia? Did anyone stay in Georgia or everyone else? No, my daughter and them is in Georgia now, but Elaine is my father's youngest sister, my aunt. Yeah. Which she gets a kick out of calling me nephew because we're about the same age. <laughs> uh, she's in Virginia. She invited me down. Uh, I guess we're pretty much reconnecting right now. We, okay. we talk and everything. Uh, sure. She invited me down. Uh, no, we never went back to Augusta, Georgia. Yeah. You yeah, know. Yeah. My father's history, I'm not too uh, knowledgeable about that. You know, my mom, she was like a uh, bunch of brothers and sisters. You know, back in the days, it, it would be grandma had 10 kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Grandma had 10 kids. I don't yeah. even know if the birth, birth control existed. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but sure. uh, yeah, my, she was the oldest. And, okay, and everything, wow. so, uh, and she was like the last surviving member wow. of her family, too. Wow. Yeah, but, um, we, uh, my, my, my mom said always talked about, like, family reunion. No, we never did that. Okay, we, never did that. Everybody's busy doing their own thing, you know. Sure. So it's kind of hard to pull them together, or people will sell you dreams. Okay, yeah. And then don't show all this stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, well, Kurt, why don't you go ahead and, and start asking some more questions? Uh, uh, about uh, I wanted to kind of like uh, you got you graduated from music and arts. No, I didn't. Didn't. Okay. I got in trouble in the tenth grade, and I wound up be, uh, getting a prison sentence. All right. You want to talk about that a little? I mean, not not the what you did, but you know what what was that experience like? Now you know you. 17 in, in a state prison? What is that experience like? Hmm. So you, you, you went upstate. So out, out of Rikers, you was in Rikers, but then you went upstate. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, that, so you were pretty young in there. 17. That's young. 17, yeah, yeah, yeah. In adult prison, that's pretty young. Yeah, oh, uh, I, I got my GD. Ended up getting my GD and, uh, Got the highest grade out of everybody. Yeah. Um, when I came home in '79, around November, because when I you, when you're getting closer to your release, I tried to get into college up there. Oh, okay. And they sure. wouldn't let me. For I think it was a violent crime, whatever they classified to say no. Yeah. So what I did was uh, said as soon as I get out, I'm going to college. Yeah. And uh. They said because my GED was a 242 was what was my score. Okay. You have to have 300 or better to go to a university. Oh. So that 242, I ended up in Bronx Community College. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I think, um, no, I didn't graduate from there. Hmm. But um, I have, uh, for 66 credits to graduate, I think I had 62. Oh, okay, yeah. so you're right. We're right close. close there. Yeah. Um, reason being, I had a job with some guys on Arthur Avenue. It was like a, uh, uh, it was a TAP program, tuition assistance program, or something like that. Uh, and they it convinced me to stay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I needed one more class, which was a uh, pre pre calculus. Oh, okay. okay. And uh. I was trying to take it at night, and there was not enough people registering, oh. so I never got that class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They they were giving up uh, a couple of people I knew had got their honorary degree. 
you know. Yeah. But you have to go like to the math department or to whatever department and state your case and whatever, and sure. it's up to their discretion. But I, I think I was trying to get back in. It, it just never worked. Mm. Um, okay. Um, so, what was your your first introduction to, to style writing? So obviously, you're you're in the game, and you know they're not just putting up their name in your way. They're like, you, you got to develop a form to get some respect. So when did you start kind of like working on the craft and did you uh, see any other artists that you wanted to innovate from after what you saw them do? You wanted to do your own kind of innovation in, in style writing. Uh, that's just what graph is all about. It's just creative, it's, you know. Anybody could just do a, a B U T, but it's how you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about innovation. That's what the game is about: innovation, creating. Like you got guys that have different ten different names. Got one name, but I'm gonna work hard each time to change it up. Like you asked me before, did I have other names? I had a couple of names yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's certain letters that uh kind of intrigued me, like the uh, the end that goes like that with the big, that I, so I came up with Nino or something okay. crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to highlight that letter, right? Right. To highlight the letter. Oh, right, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I, um, I just, see, nowadays, everybody's just adding arrows and stuff. I mean, come on, man. Got to be more than that. Yeah. But yeah, I just always, I always created, always. Sometimes we would sit around a table all day. Wow, all day. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you were using the uh, the black books for, before you before you go to the yard. So you do nah, this. not black books are for keeps. You know, you, you may be more like a sketch pad. More like a sketch pad. pad. Okay. Everyone would be spread out and yeah, doing sitting around and you know you get a little critique. But then you got some guys who try to criticize. You be like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> you always gonna get that. Yeah. Did Did y'all ever look at like uh like different kinds of typefaces or like things like that or you pretty much just kept it within what you all were doing did you look at like calligraphy or things like that ever to get inspiration yeah well we had cat well you did faces characters uh different letters sometimes it's calligraphy and, and things like that is what give you different ideas yeah, yeah. sometimes you look at that and figure oh, i can take that and do this yeah for sure yeah for sure everything is uh inspiration yeah. Everything. Yeah. I could look over here and see that box and say, I'm going to do box letters. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, shit. I can make the 3D falling back like that. Yeah. Everything's just great. You, 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 you just see it like that. That's yeah, how you see it. Yeah. So, how was it learning how to use the spray paint can? Because there's, there's an art in just creating art with the spray paint can versus the brush. You, uh, did you experiment with it first, or you just went out there and got it naturally? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Uh, but the, uh, the game's changed. Um, I mean, even as far as just uh, faded colors, faded 3D, explosions, fire, all that's changed. It's just a lot more. But yeah, you experiment. You, you, you like the saying goes: you learn something new every day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to try it though. Yeah. It doesn't always work. Yeah. I was always. Okay. But so it's trial and error. Yeah, trial yeah, and yeah. error. Right. Do right. You, do you remember the first uh, spray paint can you ever picked up? It was probably Red Devil. Red Devil. Mm -hmm. Red, it, back then it was Krylon, Red Devil, and Rustoleum. Okay. Those were the three major brands. Yeah. But I think today. Uh, it's a spray paint is a big market. Yeah. So now they got Montana. They got a, a bunch of other brands. You got some guys from Germany doing something. There's a paint called Loop. There's another paint called Double A or something. Yeah. But it's the quality and the pressure, because high pressure means it'll spit fast. So if you don't know that, it's just gonna be all kind of drips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they have other paints that's low pressure, just kind of spit slow. Which is what you want, pretty much. Sure. You know, uh, if you get high pressure, that's probably if you're doing something like this, and you have the right cap. Yeah. You can probably feel it fast. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I learned about that pressure thing quick. <laughs> yeah, because I'm doing what I normally do, but I'm ruining it somehow. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you can't, uh, not like a canvas where you could just white it out. So you can't do that on the yeah, train. You can't white it out. Did Did you have guys that you were uh, uh, that you were running with who had already had a little more experience and were able to teach you, or you all kind of just going into it uh, and experimenting? Uh, physically, just going in. Yeah. But I mean, we had a lot of guys uh, that can talk to you about almost like the facts of life, the facts of graph. Yeah. Like yeah. Your, like big brothers. Sure. Uncles like Stan, one fifty three. God bless his dead. Phase two. I used to go to Stan's house like all the time. Yeah. And just watch him paint. Yeah. And it's still things he did that I never figured out. Really. Yeah, um, but that's that's the canvas. That's when uh, the game trans uh, transferred like over the canvases and stuff. Okay, okay. Because he was always uh, intent on trying to do. He was like a, an illustrator. He wanted to do a comic book. Yeah, yeah. Type of guy, and uh, we used to go and sit down and watch him draw and help him with the dialogue and stuff like that. Yeah. But as far as uh, learning how to paint, you just learn on your own. Yeah, that's the only way you can do it. Yeah, yeah. So you, your career, um, you you kind of spend a lot of time doing whole cars versus throw ups. Cause throw ups could be smaller and you do them quicker. The whole car is a, it's a lot more work to. It. Yeah. So, what? Tell us what goes into painting a whole car. It's a production. Production is just a. Uh, you gotta have a theme. Yeah. Sometimes you have to have a blueprint. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really obvious. Uh, and then you have to have to paint. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's teamwork. You have certain guys that are, like I was, back then I was, uh, when we was on the sixes and, and some of the, uh, the early days on the five, I'm like the, like the, and not to brag, but the brains of the whole operation. Sure. You know, I I can do the outlines, everybody's. While he's coming behind me, filling in. Yeah. Then I'll come back to do the 3D, uh, you know, and then all the way down while he's doing, you know, it was it was, wow. it was an operation. Wow. You know, uh, and yeah, it was the, the objective was to do the whole car. Even if you just did three different names, Connected them with a cloud and then just did all kind of explosions and stuff just to cover the whole train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old were you when you did your first entire car? I think I did a silver and black top to bottom uh, when I was about 13. Wow. Because I remember, and I had that picture. Uh, to give you a quick story about my photo albums. Every time we would get in trouble, my, one of my partners, Case 2, would come to my house and get the books. Yeah. Hey, Miss Wilkinson, uh, Bush uh, told me to, and so, and then I'll come home and get me. Back and forth, back and yeah, forth, yeah. back and forth, yeah. and somehow they just disappeared. That's too bad. Yeah, I had pictures going back to 72. Wow. The whole car, I was about 12, 12 or 13. Wow. But I did it the slick way. You, at, on each train station, there's a thing, a thing of pipes that come up. Mm. And there was uh, one set of pipes on 225th Street. Okay, okay. On the two train. On the two and train, I would yeah. just come there like six in the morning. Yeah. By myself. Wow. And just do um a quick whole car and just cut out. <laughs> <laughs> so how long how long does it take to do a, a whole car? Few hours. A few, few hours. hours. Okay. But see, but see, the thing about two twenty fifth street, you can see the train all the way up the, the track. So now uh, I know the train's uh, coming. Uh, I can get up and go on back downstairs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And that was a, those, those were like layups, layups versus the yard. So like the yard, you you, you kind of like you did a lot of work on layups versus going in, into the train. We did both. We did you both. Did both. Okay. Yeah, yeah, layups and yard. I said I had a favorite spot. Oh, yeah, a favorite spot? Yeah. Where was that? Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens? It's 225th Street on a two train. Two train. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or 233rd, somewhere up near the end. Okay, sure. Because, sure, you yeah. know, 
it's near the end, so not that many people are coming to go uptown. Yeah, yeah. And if there's anybody on the downtown side, you covering the windows and everything, they can't see you. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh wow, that's hey. smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It gives you more time to paint. <laughs> yeah, but um, a little trickery involved, but sometimes... The best way is just the right way, because sometimes you, I, I, I might have had a good academic background thinking out, but sometimes now you're trying to outslick the police and, and outslick the, the uh, engineers and it's the, the, uh, the, sub, the yard crew. The yard crew, yeah. And um, it doesn't always work. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to run when they see you. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you. Tell us about racking because uh, you know, there's a lot of stories about how artists got their paint. <laughs> People would do young young artists would do different kinds of things to get their paint. Different kind of things. Things like not paying for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and actually, honestly, in the beginning, I was pretty much a scaredy cat. Yeah. But like I said, I was the brain, so I didn't have to steal nothing. Sure, sure. You just organized it and. Once they once they came with the paint, out we, we figure out what we gonna do. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I mean, eventually I um, cause five of us would go in the store, and they would come out. Everybody come out with paint. And I might have one can. Yeah. <laughs> one can. But I think uh, uh, along the way, I I developed a little more uh, courage. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and now you know because it got to a point where it didn't matter. If they even saw you or not, because yeah. we once I pick pick this up, mm -hmm. it's mine. Yeah, I'm leaving with this. Yeah, and um, yeah. After after a while, I, they are uh, I got pretty good. Yeah, and that's when I used to be by myself because I could just go and get what I need. Boom. Yeah. How how many cams do you think it it, take, it would take to do a, a whole car? I, I would say. Eight, ten, okay, something yeah. like that. Not a huge number, then. No, not really. Yeah, but it depends yeah. on because I got one guy who paints today. Uh, sometime in a production, one of the main attractions is the diversity. Uh, the more colors you have, yeah. So he, this Obi, so Obi, okay. he he may have thirty cans with him. Okay. Thirty. All different colors, huh? Yeah, but just see now he can take that beige and add a little bit of brown for the shade, yeah. and you know a little bit of more darker stuff like that. And but see, you bring thirty cans and you're probably taking about thirty back with, with you. Yeah, yeah. And I was just on some. I'm taking what I need. And that's it. Yeah. You know, you know, maybe I'll find a can or I can borrow some paint, but yeah, that was me. But. uh it depends on what you're doing. Sure. How you, you know, like this today, guys got cars. Yeah. And they can have a trunk load of paint. Yeah. But lugging all that on the subway or, or walking. It's different, yeah. right? It's different. Yeah. And you're telling me earlier before we started this about the caps. I thought that was really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Then as opposed to now. Yeah, it was only two kind, two kinds of caps. It was Jiffoam and Niagara. Yeah. Jiffoam was, I think, some type of a toilet bowl cleaner or something. And Niagara was spray starch. Yeah. And like I said, we would have to go into the store and take actually take the cap off, take the cap off, take the cap off. Yeah. And like I said, now you can go online and order 100 caps. You can go to any one of these little graffiti stores yeah. and they give you a bag with 100 caps. Wow. That's what I said. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's why guys kind of give us praise because it was a whole different lifestyle. Absolutely. You know, and then you had to get in and get out. Like I said, now these guys, they're painting legal walls. Yep. You got permission. So you can sit out there all day, <laughs> go to lunch, come back, yep. you know, sign a couple of autographs, talk to a few girls. Yeah. Couldn't do that. We you get in. Over your left shoulder, yeah, right? you get in and get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's different. And did you ever use anything other than. Uh, spray paint as far as uh, paint goes? No, I think uh, guys have, but I haven't. Yeah. I've seen guys uh, actually pull out a roller. 
That makes quick work of things. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it, but like I said, today the, the the mission is to just get the job done. Yeah. You know, back then a lot of shit was taboo. Oh no, yo, you use stencils? Yeah. Oh my god, no, nah, yeah. Now I've seen the, the people put out paintbrushes and stuff. Yeah. You know. Yeah. For lines and different things, and you know, using borders to get that tight line. Yeah. It didn't, anything goes. Yeah. Yeah. But so then, they, you, they usually paint late at night. Yeah. So yeah. you don't see. You just come the next day and be like, oh, shit, oh, yo, this is nice. <laughs> you know, they got paint brushes Little did and you shit. Know. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you really had to know all the ins and outs of a spray paint can. I mean, I'm sure you got to know them very quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. P- p- cans get clogged. Yeah. Sometimes we would we would paint in, in sub zero weather. They oh. get they get clogged and shit. That's a little frustrating. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you come and you nothing and, coming out. Right. Yeah. You know, and squirting, you'd be like, oh man. <laughs> now you gotta change plans real quick. Yeah, yeah. Different stuff. Do you do you have a favorite uh production of yours from uh either from the early time or maybe your entire time uh, writing? There was one. I think, uh, you, you know the one I'm talking about, the one that they, uh, Don one filmed. Uh, it's, a, it's the one where you're standing on the, uh, the, tr- the, uh, the track and yeah. you're uh, painting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. I didn't even know he filmed it like that. Ah, okay. Oh, wow. But that, you know, I think, um, because I, I had a red, orange, and yellow cloud. My shit was... Cascade with purple 3D and yeah. and I did that real quick, uh, considering you know. Okay, yeah. And uh, my boy, he was behind me taking pictures. Wow. He wrote a book and uh, he I will, he died. God bless the dead Don one Don Queens book. writer. Queens writer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, he came out and um, they told me he was like, "Yo, I want to paint with Butch. I want to paint with Butch." We never did a piece together, but we we hung out. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I think we did that mural at Prospect Hospital. That was the beginning of like commission work. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, 1976, it was Prospect Hospital because wow. Prospect Hospital's not even there no more. No, no, no. Wow. And y'all had a mural there, huh? They gave us a canvas. It was only supposed to be about four of us, but I think it wound up being about eight or ten of us. Yeah. Same money, more bread to spread. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And uh, but we had fun that day. We had a little audience and everything. Yeah. yeah. So is that the picture in Yoga, the book? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. The Daily News wrote, wrote yeah. an article about that. Yeah. yeah. So what? Yeah, the news was there, and they had a few. Uh, uh, they have. They usually when you have events like that, they usually arrange for uh, TV, magazines, and all that. It'd be cameras instead. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, tell us a little bit about the, the fantastic, fantastic parties. Uh, TFP. Yes. TFP is uh, my crew. It's not my crew, but the crew that I'm a member of. Yeah. Uh, goes way back. I think we started TFP probably in about 72 or 73. Wow. Long time. Wow. Uh, OG, Solid, By Me, Hash, uh, who am I forgetting? Hash, Vo 56. Uh, those are like the, the, the core yeah. members. Uh, still around, everybody's still around except Solid. He, God bless the dead. Yeah. Uh, he died in a train accident. Mm-hmm. And as tight as me and him was, I don't know where I was that day. Uh, somebody has the article. I think it was 1974. Wow. Um, yeah, but the Fantastic Partners is, is, has um, it's grown. It's uh, oh, Case Two. Case Two for sure. Yeah, it's grown. It's uh, you got guys in uh, uh, uh Cento's in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, Obi is from Australia. We got guys uh, pretty, all around. Yeah. You know, the, the name is is strong. Uh, my thing about GFP, uh, it's it's only it's, it's just one thing. It's one entity. Yeah. Uh, you can't write OTB, BTR, CTE, 
Game right, TFP. No, yeah. if you notice, most of the members, it's, it's all you write. Oh, like if you was writing Steve, TFP. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, and that's that's like the main thing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of guys that uh different walks of life and stuff. Everybody's holding their own. And everybody's healthy and, and, and stuff. We get together like that. And. Um... Uh, and you all now do y'all paint sometimes together or it's more like your are there any like organized meetings or anything like that or just it's based on craft. So you're good enough as an artist will allow you to put T F P on your on your name. It's not only art. Sometimes you have to be a well rounded, pretty decent guy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, uh you know, because it's later on, we, we, we're trying to groom a new generation that might be more based on uh, your skill set, you know, but um, pretty well-rounded people, that's all. Yeah. You know, nobody running around robbing people, and nothing like that. Yeah, it's, it's based on creative art. No, that's, that's great. So, you know, um, what's... What's it like today seeing the growth of aerosol art and seeing how it's being commissioned by big companies and artists are doing large scale works on 20 story buildings. What's that like for you to see the art form grow into this kind of global phenomenon? This is... Uh it's rewarding. I know I was there when it all began, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's a global thing. It's global, my man. I bet if you walk in uh, Montefiore, you'll probably see some type of art as soon as you get in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everywhere. Uh, you go into a rich man's house, he's going to have a bust or some type of thing. Art. But see, we, we didn't create, we, we just added an art form. Yeah. Okay. Art, music and art is life. It's everywhere. For sure. And it's always going to be there. Music and art. You know, like music. You see rap came along and whatnot. Then it kind of fused with uh, R&B. Then it fused with rock and roll. You got some country rap. Yeah. You yeah, got yeah, yeah. Dominican rap. So, it, but it's all music. It's just, it's a new fusion. Everybody... Just looking for a little spice, you know. Sometimes you you you've been eating chicken all your life, but you, today you might want to try something different. Yeah, I'm gonna throw some curry pot in there. Yeah, and so it's all music and art. It's just an, it's just an added form. That's all. Graph. Graph. You said some people don't like that word. I don't. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, graffiti, 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 graffiti. Yeah, but I'm yeah, but I'm saying some people don't like the word graffiti. That's right. Yeah. But if I say graffiti, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to, as a, as a communication, you have a sender and a receiver. You're trying to get your message across. Oh, I don't like that. Now you, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really silly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of artists. Aerosol. Well, what difference does it make? Yeah. I mean, okay, graffiti uh, represents vandalism to a degree. But you get in where you fit in if the shoe fits where it. Do you vandalize or do you create? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't take it as an insult. Let it fly. Let it fly. Because it did I mean, from your perspective, when you were when you were doing um whole cars, you're thinking that you know, um I don't know what you're thinking, but when people talk about it, they talk about it as a masterpiece. As right. art. That's they're how not, it started. Right. They're not talking about the it's vandalism. Because you're going in the yard, that's, it is, I mean, obviously you're going in the yard. So the mayor, cops would call it vandalism, right? The police would call it vandalism. But the artists themselves didn't call it that. It depends on how you do it. Because if you're going to uh, cut a hole in the state's property, if you're going to leave a bunch of cans laying around, writing your name on the traffic light and <laughs> shit, yeah. See, if you you if you notice the guys who are really artists, yeah, they clean up behind them. Yeah, they clean up behind themselves. That's part of that's part of it today. Sure, you take all your shit with you, so you don't give the owner a reason not to want you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You fuck up, then now you give him a reason. So you just clean up behind yourself. Yeah. You know, that's how that goes. And you, you notice that uh, even when they have old timers day and all that, and they, they just out there and drink beer all day, look to your side. You know what? You're going to see a garbage bag. Yeah. Yeah. They don't just start busting bottles, fighting. No. It's the, 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 uh, the motive is to clean up by yourself. So it's not vandalism. But like I said, if you go in the yard, you didn't cut a hole in the fence, you didn't left a bunch of paint laying there, you didn't tagged on the, the uh, traffic signals, and you didn't fucked up. Yeah. You don't do that. Right, right. But still, they would, they would even though you would do a, a masterpiece on the whole car, MTA would still wash it off, right? Because they, yeah. they, they don't agree with how... How it was done, you know, how it was done. Oh, oh, no, you're, you're, you're supposedly defacing property. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at trains now, look at all the advertisements. Oh, I know. Absolutely. Look at the advertisements. Yeah, absolutely. No, okay. Yeah. All right, so um, <clears throat> uh, uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about what, what, what you're working on these days. Uh, I got a few campuses I'm, I'm playing with. Uh. You know, we got uh, some people who are waiting for some new work. I'm uh, setting, I'm still putting my studio together. Uh, but yeah, uh, canvases. I, I want to go bigger. I'm doing some, I, I got, got like 9 by 12 or whatever, some 8 by 10, but I want to go bigger. Because matter of fact, I have a space. Matter of fact, what I'm doing is decorating my own apartment. I'm turning my uh, apartment uh, into like an art gallery. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm really doing. I, all these spaces, but see, the thing is, you don't paint the walls. You just get a big canvas where you can just hang it. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm doing, some interior decorating. Let's, let's, let's. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So, you, you also uh, painted with... Uh, case two, you guys were were uh, known as a as a fierce art art team. And you want to talk a little bit about case two as well? That's yeah, my partner. Case uh, was before him. I was painting alone. Uh, like I said, two twenty fifth street on two. Yeah. I go up there and get do my whole car. But then, uh, how did I meet Case? We were still on the sixes. We were still hitting the six line. Okay. And we were at Soundview at night doing our little shit. Yeah. And uh, I think he was an inside writer. He was walking going through the train with a magic marker. Sure. And he saw us out there painting, so he stuck his head out. You know, and like I told you, the, uh, the main uh, statement back then was, what do you write? Yeah. Yeah. And he said, Case. I said, oh, I saw that before. And I asked him, do you know how to paint? He said, yeah. I said, come on now. And I gave him a can and had him fill in. Okay. Like the first can I think he ever had. Wow. And, and then that started a whole nother thing. He, I, he was with me every day. Wow. Yeah. Became my partner. So now it ain't just Butch. You see him Butch and Case. Butch yeah. and Case. Butch and Case. Butch and Case. He was always there. Yeah. And he's my boy, you know. And he had, um, he became a one on right? Two. Oh, yeah. Two. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's a, a dude only had one arm. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Were, uh, were, were, were there spots that you all like like to hang out at um, to see your, your work go Oh, on? yeah. Everybody knows the concourse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 149th Street and Grand Concourse. 149th Street and Grand Concourse. Yeah. Most guys came through there. Some guys yeah. didn't. Because then after a while, I think we had a, a reputation for uh, being rowdy or something. Oh, okay, okay. Or, what's a, what's a better word? Not even rowdy, but uh, kind of, uh, these guys like to start, they, they started taking stuff from people. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. we, we didn't have nothing to do. We would just go around the layup. And if we saw somebody painting, sure. we take their paint. Yeah, yeah. So, they we... we Started having a bad reputation. Okay, I see, yeah. And uh, that's why a lot of people didn't come to the concourse. Okay. Because <laughs> we would be there a lot. Or if we, on the train, because you know, uh, if anybody rides a train, when you come in uptown, 
into the Grand Concourse, yeah. the bench is right on the end. Yeah. So if I'm in the front, I'm looking. If they see you, a lot of people will leave. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, we used to watch. Um, and then we watched uh, trains on the Tremont train station. Oh, okay, okay. Because it's a big turn. So as it's turning, you can see this side. Uh, and then when it comes in, you can see this side. Okay, yeah. And if you saw something that you wanted, you run and get the picture. That's when the Kodak used to have the 35 millimeter and you would uh, and then mail it out. <laughs> yeah. That was then. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, we do concourse and then we would do uh, Tremont or 180th. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the sixth train, we would be at a Hunts Point. Sure, yeah. Mm. So, 149th in the Concord, they called out to write his bench. Yeah. Well, or was it more than one write his bench? Or is it just, that one was just. That was the one. That was the main one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody had their little spots. Yeah, for sure. You know, you got guys in Brooklyn that might hang on Utica or something. Yeah. We might hang on 180th. Okay. You know. Right, right, right. So, I mean, um, there are a lot of writers who became well known for for doing whole cars, and you and you, you knew quite a few of them. So uh, I, just, know, I know them all. Dude. All right. So let's talk oh. about some. So just by name, and you, give me give me some reflections. So, uh, Blade, for example, like... I was down with that crew, uh, Crazy Five. Crazy Five? Mm hmm Okay. I was coming down off Allerton one day. I might have been doing a piece or just taking pictures of something, roaming the city, and I ran into those guys at uh, McDonald's on Allerton. And yeah. they was like, yo, you want to get down with us? And I was like, all right, just butch shoot the Crazy Five. Yeah. Right. But it's about 50 of them, so I don't know how you'll come up with the crazy fun. Because I spoke to the girl, Portia, the new girl is Portia. And I said, Portia, you remember me? She said, yeah, you're our 28th member. Oh, nice. I was like, damn, y'all, chron chron chronologically, whatever, you know, like that? But I, he came up a few times. He saw me and we talked. Yeah. Playing. <laughs> Lee. <coughs> Lee Quinones, but he, he mentioned you in the movie Wild mm -hmm. Style. Mm -hmm. that he wanted to be like Butch too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that's, that's, that goes a lot for your heart. Yeah. But yeah, but th like, like I said, it, it's a uh, it's a, a mix of a few things. I mean, you can paint, you you, but then you have, can you get paint? You know, we had the keys to the... To, to the how the station is closed at night. Okay. We had the keys. Wow. We had keys to the trains. Yeah, I had the uh, the crew that would fuck you up if you did the wrong thing. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a, a blend. It's a mix, man. You got guys that can paint their ass off that they don't leave the block. Yeah, <laughs> right. so it's a mix. But that's how we lived. Sure, <laughs> that's why. Absolutely. That's why I told Kurt. I said, Yo, X. Any writer from back then, just say my name. <laughs> and they'll tell I, I tell you, it's just a lot of stories. And right? they'll give you a story. Yeah, yeah. yeah the stories. I mean, uh, Crash had a story, and Crash, you know. Futura. Futura had a story. Days. Days, yeah. Everybody. He says, yeah, I remember you. He said, remember that time we all went to Esplanade? This is now. Okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's, what, that's what it was then. It was, it was, it was, Graph was a way of life. Yeah, yeah. It was, and I'm I'm proud of the guys that took it to canvas, yeah, and and, and pushed the art form, and uh, you know it's graph, it's mixing with street art, and and, and then it's it's become a commercial. But you know let's let's get a piece of that now because you got some of the original MCs and and, and DJs that still live in the Bronx, I while know. you got some other guys that didn't bought houses in California. Absolutely. Dr. Dre, ninety million or something. I know, I know. <laughs> but then you got guys that cool still, work. yeah, still living at fifteen twenty. Right. Still living. But yeah, I heard they had offered him a bunch of stuff, and he he acted funny. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I think they were trying to give him a, a star on the Walk of Fame or something. Uh, you know, but he, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But I, yeah, that's the sad part, man. How they did like the, uh, the rappers and, and all that. They they uh. They took that and, and left them high and dry. Yeah. Yeah, Billy I'm like, Wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All of them. Herc used to write too. Yeah. Man, Bada used to write. Yeah. 
off the record. Sure. Off the record. But all of them, back then, I told you before uh, hip hop and all that, so if you met somebody, they're going to say, what are you writing? Yeah, yeah. So so writing was was more of a deal in the Bronx. That's the first yeah. element. That's right. what they, they say. Yeah, yeah, write it. Everybody used to write. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, you was in the... Uh, you and Case were featured in the movie uh, Style, Style, Style Wars. So that was that was a good scene, man. You want to talk a little bit about that, that scene and how... I think it was. A, I think it's another piece to that that they didn't show. Was, oh, really? was there a piece of us walking down the train st- the platform? I didn't see it. I okay, see that. all right. I, I saw when y'all was in the the apartment. Right. The case was, was there was talking. another part where we was walking down. Uh, we was in Esplanade because I remember that day because yeah. I had my daughter with me oh, <laughs> and she was okay. like two years old. Oh. And I had on the stroller, and I had to put the stroller to the side. Yeah. And that's when I started telling these guys, well, what are y'all paying? Because yeah. y'all got us doing all this. Uh, I, that scene I never saw again. Okay. But uh, like I said, if you if you look at that, I I do the coaching and, 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 and advising off camera. Because you, you see, we in Style Wars, Case is doing all the talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the time. All the time. He's a star. He's a star. Yeah, he's a character. Yeah. And I, I wasn't doing no talking. Yeah, yeah. That's the mouthpiece. He, he'll tell you. <laughs> but God bless the dead. That, that was my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I saw the YouTube video of uh, they were interviewing you and Dandy. And what was, what was that uh, gallery? Uh, fashion Motor. Was it Fashion Motor? I think it was Fashion Motor on 3rd Avenue. Yeah, they were interviewing both of you guys, and it was interesting, huh? Because Donnie went, went on to become, he, rest in peace, Donnie, but he became famous, too, yeah. as, as a whole car artist, you know. That, he, he got one whole car that's, like, famous, immortal. And cool, iconic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Donnie. You know, yeah. Was, uh, but it's, the whole the whole car here was, when, when did the whole car era end? Like, when they, when they, like, Cox like got a lot of a lot of people to clean all the trains and, and got a lot of police on it. And, I don't know. I think uh, they, I, I, from what what I think, I think they started treating the car with some chemical oh. or something like that. To so where you yeah, hang on. right? Huh. Because it, it would seem funny that all of a sudden nobody's doing no, nothing. Yeah. But once in a while, you will see something. People will get. You know, beside yourself and go and try something. Fine, fine, wait, yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll see it here and there. But yeah, as yeah. far as the whole thing, I think most of the guys would probably still be doing it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Do you remember the last one that you did? Uh, On the train? No, I don't. Yeah. They, they were just coming. They were yeah. just coming. I would, it, it, it was almost like uh, you had to have, you had to, like you said, refresh or update. Every week I had to have something, you know, come out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Because then you had Blade and them had shit. They would had shit coming out. It, after a while, it became a game of, of keeping up. Yeah. You know, uh, Lee and them started the whole car thing, so we had to do whole cars. Yeah. Blade and them had shit coming out regular, so we had to have shit come out regular. Yeah. It was a, it was a race. Everybody was doing it. Yeah. Everybody was racing. <laughs> yeah, you race on cars, but they had a whole throw up, throw up area too. If people were just doing their throw ups. No, not everybody. Yeah, I mean, you might have a simple. Uh, yeah, well, I guess that's a throw up. Yeah. A simple one. Like, but then you had guys that all they did was throw ups. Well, yeah, all right, right. All they did was throw ups. Yeah, yeah. So what's what's? Can you explain the throw up a little bit? Quick. Um, Throw up. It pretty much explains itself. Uh, you can probably do two or three throws with, with a, two cans. Yeah. That's that's an attempt to get up, to have your name just to more pieces. Like you had the guy in, I in. Two letters. He, he talking about uh, he got a million pieces. Easy to write I in a million times. And he would do on one car 20 of them. <laughs> You know, now now your count is up twenty. Oh yeah, I got a million pieces. <laughs> There's a guy in my neighborhood now who's like that. 
A million pieces with about with about ten cans. Yeah. <laughs> Type of bulls. And then sometimes you can see uh they're not even thoroughly filled in. Yeah. You might just say shh, shh, shh. You'd be like, come on man, that's a eh. you know, that don't even count. Man, what a what a story, man. I um that there must have been such a interesting but I mean, if, if you're an artist, you can do a simple piece, but then you may want to add some 3D. You may want to throw some designs in there. Yeah. You know, you know, a little cloud. One thing leads to another. Now you want a cloud. Now yeah. you, you know, so it's, unless you only have two cans, you're gonna do you're gonna do a little more. Yeah. And we didn't count pieces. I think uh, our thing was. Uh, because we had Blade, we had Billy, Big 149, Butch. So our thing was B's. Mm. The letter B. Oh. So I, I was the king of B's. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Blade, Bic, Billy. I think we had Bloodshed, uh, Butch. Uh, it, it was, a, it's, and you know, king of B's. Then I was king of top to bottoms. King of the two. Yeah. Everything was a race. Just putting it out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would, would you ever uh, paint any of the uh, lines that are exclusively in Manhattan? I don't think there are any lines. Or no, not exclusively in Manhattan, but I guess ones that don't go up to the Bronx. I would. Yeah, uh, yeah like, like you got the G that takes you from Brooklyn across Manhattan into Queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The F train and the shit like train. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I was into that. I think those are more the BMT trains. Sure. The IRTs are the ones that we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The BMTs are the ones that are kind of shaped like that, and they're silver. Yeah. But, um, no, nah, I don't think I ever, because a lot of guys used to go out to uh, Brooklyn to the layups. I didn't, we had layups in our backyard. Yeah. I'm not going to Brooklyn. Why go all the way to Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got our paint stash in, in the station, and it's locked. Okay. You know, I'm taking my shit and go two, three stops up and, and, and produce something fresh and new. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, uh, what about the, the, was the third album level? Was that already, that was already in the process of being dismantled by the time you started? Or was that? Or oh, was yeah, that I think it was gone. It, yeah, it was yeah, long yeah. gone. Now, I was born right there, 3809, Third yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Um, in Claremont Parkway, but I think the, the Third Avenue that was it was on its way out then. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because now they got the buses and shit. Buses was more prevalent at, after that. But I remember the Third Avenue. Sure, album. sure, yeah. sure. They had the little wicker seats and shit with the fan. <laughs> I remember that. So I, I met you uh, at that mobile messenger service. So how, how did you become a bike messenger? How did you get into that? Uh, I don't know. I guess it was quick and easy. Yeah. And it was it was big, it was a big business too. Sure. Big business. So uh, got to get a bike. So you knew how to ride a bike already. Yeah. Get, get you a bike. Get you a bag. And I think uh, mobile. I mean, not mobile. Uh, who did I start with? Uh, it was called Wingfoot. Wingfoot. Wingfoot was on 38th and 6th. They became Dynamics. Oh, they became Dynamics. Oh, hey, Dynamics is big. Yeah, I know. They, they, I think they, uh, there was a lot of companies merged. That's right. Uh, yeah, but I was uh, I was Wingfoot. And we was, uh, we was rocking for a while. But I was telling them, too, the, uh, we were getting... Remember, they came out with biking cops. Police on bikes. I don't know if you remember that. Mm -hmm. You must have been out of the game. But this was the 90s. They had police on bikes. For us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, you uh, going the wrong way, sidewalk, red light. Your third red light ticket is $750. Oh. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That's some serious money. I, I had 14 tickets that I have never paid for. Yeah. And they're still sitting there. Um, But... They need those biking cops now. You see all these uh, motorized scooters, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. electric bikes. And yeah. I was telling them, and I laughed. I said, I think everybody goes through at least one 
harrowing experience a day with the with the uh, uh, e-bike. Oh yeah, absolutely. everybody. Yeah, the wizards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. You be like, yo, what, what you doing? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. What you doing, man? Don't you got a ride? Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. Then I had left. I was in Texas for about, I can say, eight years. I was down there. And I came back. I think. Uh. Actually, to be honest, I think I got blackballed because I was working at a Darden restaurant called Yard House. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, they have. I think they have a yard house in Houston. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the big thing I was looking for in Houston was Ch Jimmy Chang's. It was a Chinese restaurant. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I said that. I was in Texas. I said I want some wings and rice badly. Yeah. And the girl took me to Jimmy Ch Jimmy <laughs> Chang's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's. It's a Chinese restaurant in Houston. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know down there, it's, you can get a burrito on every corner. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's down the burrito. Yo, they got some down there where they mix corn and mayonnaise. You ever seen that? Oh yeah, elote or something. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it's called, but it's I'm like corn and mayonnaise, <laughs> and it's like a delicacy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they spread it on the corn and Whoa. a little cayenne pepper or something on it. Yeah, there. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But um, I, I left. Uh, my mom said passed in 2017, and uh, she had a co-op over here in Co-op City, and I was supposed to come back. For the co-op, and uh, I I didn't put in a, I put in a two week notice yeah. at Yard House, but I think I left that in a week. Yeah. Only reason why was because uh, I was trying to get out of the landlord's apartment before the first before we went into the month, sure. because he's gonna try to prorate or whatever. Oh, you've been here eight days. That's yeah. a couple of times. So I said, you know, let me get out of there on the first. Yeah. And uh, I don't think Yard House liked the way I exited because. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was one girl, Emily, was going back to California, and she had visited uh, at the uh, yard house in California, talked and everything, and they arranged the transfer. So I'm watching her and saying, yo, well, cool, because I'm going to New York. Yeah. Uh, I came, went to the yard house. There's a yard house in Yonkers somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's... And I talked to them and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, as soon as we talk to your manager, you don't worry about it. We get you in your garden. Oh, uh, but I never got in. Damn. Never got in. And I, and I, then I went to uh, Olive Garden. That they said, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, but never got in. Yeah. You know, then Yard House just opened up in Times Square. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I said, let me uh, go there. They said, uh, they came up with something. But I said, that that, that manager that I, I left, I think she really did something. Because I was there for eight years. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's when I went back to mobile. I said, let me let me go back to these guys, and they took me back. Uh, so what's, what was Texas like? I mean, uh, you, you you liked it down there? Was, it, was, it was all right. Sorry? I had fun. I had me a, a, a brand new car, apartment, and all that. You know, two, three air conditioners in my apartment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only thing about them, the bus stop, it doesn't have like we have. I know. It's just a bench. Yep. In the middle of the in the middle of the grass, you be like, and it'd be a hundred degrees. And, and you might wait there thirty minutes or something because the buses don't come very often. In New York, three days over ninety is a heat wave. In Texas, it was like forty days over a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. And everybody walking around. Don't let it. Don't let the temperature drop in Texas. If it's forty or fifty degrees, they're panicking. I'm like, what? This Arctic feels. This shit, Yeah. This feels good. <laughs> they like. Oh my. I think one time before I left, they saw snow. It might have been a little flurry. Yeah. They went bananas. Man. I'm like, yo. <laughs> This is crazy, but uh, yeah, Texas was good. I, I had fun, you know, a bunch of girlfriends and all that. And so you was near Houston? No, I was in San Antonio. San Antonio. Houston is two hours. Oh, Houston two hours. Down I-10. All right, all right. And then uh, after you got Beaumont, Katie, and all that and shit. So you, 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 did you paint down there? Yeah, they, they, had a, uh, they had a spot called the Paint Yard. It's one of them grab stores. They sold paint. You go in the back. They had a wall. Right. 
uh, I, I had some pictures that I don't know what happened to them. Uh, me, I had this little kid. I call him a weasel, but um, Dap, D A P, and then uh, Wizard. I don't know if you Wizard. He has he's a, he's a uh, with his characters. He's a bad dude. Yeah, yeah. And we collaborate on something. Uh, we had fun that day. And then I think I drove up to Dallas. And they had this wall up there. I, I did a piece in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. San Antonio. We supposed to go. Uh, Houston has the meeting of styles. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called in Houston. San Antonio is called Clog Caps. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a few, there's a few conventions they be having. Clog Caps is nice. I told you, the Mexican dudes was amazing. Yeah. And then they was playing James Brown, and I'm like, oh shit, they had <laughs> hip hop. Like yeah, yeah. Everybody had their little coolest. It was, like, it was like a factory area. Yeah. And they they was rocking. Yeah. Rocking, yeah. Clog caps. I, I think I had the book or something. It was, uh, what year was that? It had to be, might be uh, 2015 or something. 2015, all right. Oh, man, that's. Uh... Texas Texas teams were fun, man. Yeah, they they just getting up on graph, and then you know they they got the uh, what is that like Aztec Indian motif thing? They do a lot of that, and then they got a they got a couple of some they gave me some shirts, some complimentary shit. Uh, out the, the School of Fine Arts, this is for you. Just that that that, yeah. Uh, then uh, Karen came down there. Right. And uh, see, the thing was, she wanted to take a picture of me piecing, but I had already did a piece. So we went inside, bought a can of paint, and I'm tagging my name, and she's taking a picture of it. Mm -hmm. But see, the thing is, the guy that runs the, the walls, any wall, you're not really supposed to tag mm -hmm. because that's going to get people thinking that they can just tag. Yeah, yeah. So what he did, he didn't say anything like, yo, but you wasn't supposed to do that, blah, 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 blah. What they did, they went over my shit the next day. Ah, I said. You know, TK was down there too. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But uh, yeah, that, that kind of uh, diffused the whole friendship. I'm like, you punk motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I think I recently spoke to the guy. Oh, yo, but you know, I feel bad about that, this and that and that and this. I'm like, yo, but it, it wasn't nothing because uh, it was they pain anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the only thing about today. Uh, today's artist is buying paint. Yeah. I find that hard to do. Yeah, yeah. I find that hard to do. Yeah, for sure. And I know guys that are like my boy from Australia. He'll go and buy 10, 15 cans. But you see the thing about that, it's not like it used to be like, yo, let me get some of that red for a His paint is his paint. Uh, he doesn't share it, huh? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Which I can dig, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you buy buying paint, but then everybody's trying to uh, do cost-effective shit. They got cans for $5 and $6 and shit like that. I, I think I had bought four cans, and I was like hyperventilating. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a paint. Are you honest? <laughs> yeah. So now they have the paint and, and locked up in cages. How do you feel about that? We, it, it costs us. We used to, <laughs> we used to empty shit out. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You see this bookshelf? Yeah. If that was all paint, we would probably come in with a dolly. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the store. Mm -hmm. And try, and try to take the whole try, wow. no try to wheel the whole thing out oh, oh, oh. <laughs> because I mean we got guys that go in the back and act like they gonna steal something or yeah. they need help excuse me sir get them out of here you know and then we wheeling the fucking whole rack out <laughs> yeah we went big we went big we used to uh, we had one guy used to go in the store with a, a big suitcase yeah yeah were, were there uh, were there some of the stores that you all like to hit up the most? Or you have to move around a lot. Uh, we moved around a lot because I mean, if you burn a store, <laughs> but we so we would go back. They, remember, I don't know, y'all guys, Martin Paints, Martins. Yeah, Martin Paints. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, what was the store in Queens? Was it Genevieve's Drugs? Genevieve's Drugs was in Queens. Ma Mont, right? No, no, but Martin's Paint. Yeah. And then we, those were like the two main. Okay, yeah, those are the Martin's two. and Genevieve's Drugs. I see. 
So if you're going out to Genovese, then you're going to have to get all that paint back up to the Bronx. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, you you exhilarated now. <laughs> Yo, you got you're probably juggling yeah, them yeah, shit. Yeah. You know. The travel don't mean nothing. <laughs> no, yeah. no, yeah. We didn't been out to Long Island and shit. We, we found stores that had back doors. Okay, yeah, yeah. We had stores where you would have to really wait 10 or 15 minutes just to get help. Excuse me, and the lady would just keep walking. Yeah. We'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yo, and then we'd just come in and, <laughs> and, and two or three trips. Yeah. 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 But that was, that might have been the 80s, man. It might have been, not even the 80s. It might have been the 70s, because I think the 80s is when uh, fucking Angel Dust came out and all oh, kind of okay. shit. Okay. Drugs. Yeah, drugs. That's Drug that, that sums it up. Drug yeah. war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, that shit start happening. Everybody want to try something, you know, which wasn't good. But, yeah, it changed the game. It yeah. really did. It had, it had a big impact on the graph community? Somewhat. Nah, because in the beginning, we would go to the layup with sandwiches, yeah. beer, yeah. a couple of joints, you yeah. know, because that's all you needed. You can buy a trade bag and get five, six joints. Yeah. You know, so we would go, we, we started the little parties. You know, get in there, puff a joint. You know, okay, I'll do the outline. And, yeah. You know, but I think it was the harder drugs that, uh, you know. You know, that's that's like the trap, smoke. Yeah. But you just smoke weed, you get a little feeling. Now let me take a puff of that. Yeah. What is yeah. that shit? Give me a puff. <laughs> you know, yeah. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, it, um... It depends on the individual because I know sure. some guys that can get high and just want to sit down and and space out on a piece of paper. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, by the time you would say twenty four, was the train era over? So, because you you started at around twelve, and it, it, it was a certain period that twenty four. I think I was uh, nineteen eighty four. I was about school. I was in Bronx, New York. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I left there in '85, and uh, that's when fucking crack hit. Oh, all right, yeah, 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 crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. crack. What is that shit? Yeah. I never tried crack. <laughs> so, '84, they were still doing whole cars in '84. But they still still artists out there. I, I don't know. I, I think I was uh, at that time. I was I was the shirt and tie with the book bag and shit. Okay. Well, okay. let me let me say leather attaché. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the shirt and tie, you know. Uh, I, I think I, I had a brand new car. Oh, okay. And all that. I had two, three, four girlfriends and stuff. So you wasn't uh, hitting the trains as much. No, nah, not really. But then there's always somebody who kind of. Uh, Nudges me back in. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This and that. I think uh, I might have. Uh, Case is usually the one. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Uh, but then I think at that time, rap. Uh, some rap is uh was was getting bigger. Oh, okay, that time. Rap was getting bigger and uh. You know, we was going to the, the different parties and stuff, and uh, like Flash and all them. And, sure. Uh, they would have the amphitheater somewhere down by the Lower East Side, I think. Yeah, East River Drive, they just tore it down. Yeah, we just had um, Wild Style 35th up there. Is there, because there isn't that project like Cherry Street or some shit? That's uh, the Velotix Houses on Jackson. Oh. Hmm. Behind the courts. Yep. Yeah. They just had something big over there. I didn't know they tore it down. I, I never found it. I was I'm walking up and down the thing. They said, "Well, you have to know where it's at because you don't hear it. You would have to know." And I was walking, never found it. Right across from Jackson Park, little bridge. Yeah, yeah they said it was a bridge. Yeah, they just had something big uh, over there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so hip hop. I mean, obviously hip hop. Is is pioneered in the Bronx, so you was around, you know, Grandmaster Flash and a lot of these artists, you know. Or, yeah. Now, um, do you remember hanging with Grandmaster 
flash at all? Have... No, nah, I, I'd been around those guys, but uh, I think I was closer to the Soul Sonic guys. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, they were Bronx River. Yeah. Uh, but then at, at this time, uh, people were getting like big headed. Eagles. Sure. They were traveling, right? They traveling. Around. I don't know. Yeah. But I just know they were a lot of eagles yeah. and shit. So, and I'm not starstruck. Yeah. So if you don't want to extend yourself, then heck with you. Yeah. Well, I think the two movies came out in the early '80s: Star Wars and Wild, uh, Wild Style. Style. I think it was '82. Yeah, something 82, like that. '82, '83. So you was like a movie star in '82. <laughs> 82, 83. Yeah, I've been in newspapers, magazines, movies, all of that. Yeah. Books. But what's fame without fortune? Give me the money. Yeah, for and sure. I, for and sure. just give me a, put my name in the credits and let me go ahead on down yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what it is now. Uh, a lot of guys, it's just more, uh, you know, contracts and stuff. Everything is a disclosure and stuff like that. Because even when Karen came down and did the interview for the Case 2 documentary, yes. she, I, she had me sign the papers. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, you know, it's better, it's better to kind of just talk than really interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, better yeah. to just talk. Right. You'll, get, you'll get way more right. in the, the different, better way. Yeah, you absolutely. Know. Uh, but she came down, and we had fun, and we had dinner and stuff like that. Uh, we just, uh, they buried somebody. Well, they didn't bury, they cremated a uh, the guy, one of TFP's wives. She, mm -hmm. Yeah, she was in a uh, fire a couple of weeks ago. And we, oh, had, the, yeah, we had the memorial um, Saturday. Yeah, rest in peace, Sherry. Uh, then the the sun is just passed as well. It's smoke inhalation. Oh, uh, with the, the the big fire in the in the Bronx. Not that no, one. That one, a different one. Yeah, but I used to live in that building. Oh, really? On the fifteenth floor. That's crazy. Three thirty three East One Eighty First. But that's right before, and I I was having problems with management, and I, that's when I left and went to Texas. Okay, I see. Yeah. That was like oh eight, oh okay. seven, oh eight, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, so that was uh, the, the, that was uh, five, there was a, yeah, there was another big fire on Webb. Oh, I don't know if you heard okay, that, right. but uh, it was only one apartment that burnt, and that was Bot's apartment. Man, his wife got burnt, and his son he had smoke inhalation. That's terrible. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Were, were there many fires uh, in any of the places you lived uh, growing up? Very much, or those are I was in the Bronx. The Bronx was burnt down, period. For sure. <laughs> we, our, our hangout would be an abandoned building, a yeah. burnt down building. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, they got pictures, some hip hop pictures where you just see bricks stacked yeah, up. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what it was. Yeah. That was that was it. You know, swinging on a monkey bar in a, in a you know. Yeah, that, that was the Bronx in the 80s. Yeah. Had abandoned cars, burnt out yeah. cars. Yeah, but see, this now is 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 entirely different. Yeah, it's entirely. They didn't rebuilt it. You know, they got a lot of malls, and you know, they trying to offer us everything. I don't know if we appreciate it. You know, because you got your restaurants, you got your Popeyes, you got White Castle, you got yeah, the Chinese sure, stuff. Sure. Yeah, you got all. They trying to offer us everything. I don't know if it's just after our money or whatever, but um, it's just should be decent. What is this here? It should be decent. Oh, it's just a. Uh, uh, we're going to act. We ask every artist after the interview to tag to do a tag for us uh, for the library archive. But that's that's one of my, that's one of my books. That's all. So I just use this tab, but I'm gonna tear it out, and then it's gonna go in the library archive while, while we're here. So that's Ventura, right there. Uh, I don't know who that artist is. But some of them were your friends, so. Uh, this looked like. Uh, that's for sure. Oh, that's what that was. We did that at the, the Bronx Museum. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bronx Museum. Yeah, over. Uh, the one on the concourse. The Grand Concourse. Oh yeah. yeah. When was that? Yeah, yeah. That was. Uh, oh, they had a big. A, they had a big show there. Yeah. yeah just yeah. Right, 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 around that 
show. When they did the whole That was uh, February of last year or something? No, I know it was. 20. It, was, it was before the COVID. Right before was, COVID. Right before yeah, COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Futura did a, um, uh, like a three hour black book signing. Like he, 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 anybody could come. It was free. Bring your black book. And he was signing. It was really, really nice. But that you can't, does that say future? Because if you sign a black, or I guess it was just getting his art out. But to get your name out, he should, I, I would expect to be able, something legible. Oh, shit, future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're going to sign 100 books. <laughs> you just. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, that's, uh, but you, you went to that exhibit, right? The, the, the Bronx? Yeah. yeah. It was, I think that was the best event that the Bronx had had in a long time. Oh, Right, yeah. right, right. So down in, down in Miami, I was mentioning to you, they have you on the uh, Museum of Graffiti in Miami. Sure. They have their name as the one of the pioneers that were had his own style. Mm -hmm. Right? And I believe they have pictures of the the Don, the Don Juan card that you, that, who photographed it. Right. They had it hanging on the, hanging on the wall. So, I mean, how's that? feel to be in the museum where, where they're telling the story of how this art form began and they're going to have to go by your name, right? To, to kind of understand how this whole global movement started. Yeah, um, I'm not surprised. I said I was there. I, yeah. was, I was there. Yeah. You know. It's not surprising. I mean, you know, if you have a... They came up with a list of the 50 best writers New York City ever had. Yeah. I think I'm number 13 or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But it makes me laugh. That's what I told you that's what we was living, man. Yeah. All right, All right. And you didn't count how many trades you did. So that's that's interesting too. So. No, nah, I didn't count. I don't I wasn't on that. I don't think I was on that. I'm just I'm got new shit. Yeah. Your value's production, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they said, day at a time, a piece at a time. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 I wasn't trying to uh, like be the king of you know like like in with a million pieces. Like I said, I'm king of bees, king of top to bottoms, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Could yep. you have any other? Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty good. I mean, okay. I, think, I, think, I think I'm good. I'm sure I'm I, I, I got I got a, a final question. And then, Pastor, if you have some questions, uh, you're more than welcome to ask them. I'm just on the observation. Okay. Sorry, right. 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 Um, so here's a final question for you. Uh, uh, and this this is more about just the Bronx in general. Uh, what does the Bronx represent to you? Home, basically. Yeah. Bronx is home. I was born in Jacoby Hospital on March 31st, 1960. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't been through the Claremont. Uh, we moved to Washington Avenue. Yeah. Uh, from there we moved to Lambert. That was uh, no uh, Longfellow. Longfellow. Longfellow okay. Yeah. Uh, that's Hunts Point. And sure. then from there we moved uh, to uh, Lambert. I think I was in Lambert for twenty years. Wow. Yeah. Then uh, I moved out. We had a girlfriend. We got a place. And then my mom's went to co-op. Yeah. She was up there about 25 years. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I uh, came up there to get the co-op. But my, uh, it's a whole legal system. Like I was saying about signing stuff. Sure, my yeah. name wasn't on anything. Oh, man. So, uh, I mean, and you have the option to add people to your... What do they call it? The affidavit. Yeah. And uh, that wasn't on there. So that, that created a whole other thing. But yeah, I love the Bronx. The Bronx has its, its good moments and good times. And, and um, it's places in the Bronx that are beautiful, man. Absolutely. Listen, I was at... Uh, this is... And I don't know if you guys know where Aldi's is at on, on, on Gun Hill. On oh, Gun Hill. I used to go there all the time. Behind there. It's beautiful. You you wouldn't even know it's back there. Yeah, yeah. Like, beautiful. Yeah, back there? The yeah. Big Hill. Beautiful. Going, what is that? What road is that? I don't know the name of the street, but it's but but where Aldi is back. I back what you're by, talking about. Yeah. yeah. Behind there, over, it's, it's immaculate. It is. I said, wow, like a hidden jewel. I know. Absolutely. Yeah, but I love the Bronx. I like the Bronx. Uh, Bronx is home. Yeah. Do you think um, living in and growing up in the Bronx, do you think that had uh, like a 
specific impact on your style as far as your, your writing goes? No, not really. Yeah. Uh, just because, like, you, you if you draw, you like you go into a zone. Yeah. And and uh, that that this, wherever you are, you can go into that zone. Right. Yeah. Don't matter where you at. It's yeah. just you know that's why a lot of times you draw because you can just kind of block all that out. Yeah. And you were telling me earlier that that you th you think art might have been a way for you, uh, like a way of escape or or, or something. Yeah. You want mm -hmm. you want to talk about that for. Well, art, 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 music, and art. I think music and art is everybody's escape because everybody has a favorite song. For sure. Uh, everybody uh, does some type of doodling. Yeah. Uh, it's an escape. It's, uh, and then color. Yeah. You know. Uh, and the thing about today is you don't have to be a, a expert or anything. What you your, your work is your work. Yeah. You know, anything's allowed. That's why it's so easy to draw. Whatever you do. You got kids that are five years old are drawing. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Artist life, man. That's all I say. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap up unless you want to uh, share anything else. Um, anything we're going to talk, talk about that you want to talk about or uh, maybe... Any advice for artists today or anything like that? Well, the only uh, advice I can give to artists is just to be yourself. Uh, if you're coming back, if you're making a comeback, uh, come back with what you're known for. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Set your own uh, bar. Yeah. You know? so do, do what you do or do what you're known for. You know, if this guy over here is wild style and he can do this, let him do it. That's yeah. him. Yeah. You're known for what you do. Just stick to your stick to your guns, man. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, uh, Butch. This has been uh, such a pleasure hearing about your life, your art, uh, your artistic vision, everything. Um, really, really appreciate it, and um, really honored to have you as the first uh, participant in this All right. project thank here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So.